Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Riley. Hey. The dude. Yeah, man. Pastor Pastor. Hoy. Carlton. And John. Howdy. Uh, I think we'll start. Um, yeah, you guys, all three of you are drinking something different right now, right? Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Just to uh, talk about what you're drinking. I'm um, drinking the uh, Sour Six Mix from Valley Center Brewery. Uh, the Five. It's, so it's, yeah, just half and half of Sour Five and Sour Six. Sour Five is like a lighter sour with like all kinds of good things going on. That I can't remember the description of, but it's really tasty. And then the six is like the bourbony, very bourbony sour. So it's it's a good, it's a good mix for sure. Enjoying it. I've got here the um, San Marcos Oatmeal Stout, and the name of it is the Old Goats Oats, and it is uh, malty with caramel and chocolate notes. It's a very good, not a hoppy stout, so I'm I'm happy with that since I don't like hops. Very enjoyable, thick, full beer. And I have to agree with you. It's one of my favorite beers. It's delicious, and I haven't had it in years. When you like, give me like a sip of it, I'm like, oh, I remember this stuff now. This is amazing. Um, I'm drinking also a local beer. It's a uh, bourbon aged uh, arrogant bastard. Arrogant bastard is a uh, beer that more or less made Stone Brewery successful. I think. Some, it, it, was their, it was It's their flagship for sure. Yeah, it may sure. it may not be the thing that, that that made them what they are, but that's what everybody knows uh, Stone Brewery for is arrogant bastard. Yeah. And so there's they're uh, not worthy. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so this is this is uh, arrogant bastard that's been thrown into a bourbon barrel for uh, who knows how long, but it's pretty damn good. And all of the sours at Valley Center Brewery are barrel aged for at least a year. <laughs> yeah, they age them uh, the traditional way. Yeah, good stuff. I talked to him when we talked to him a little bit when, yeah. when we went down there cool. that one night. Oh, yeah. I, I would like to add San Marcos Brewery. I had a few beers there, and they had they do a very good job. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, I think Marcos they're way better good. than Stone Brewery. I think they're and, wow. uh, they're the best uh, beers for my taste since I've been here in San right. Diego. There's a lot to get to, though. There's a lot of my. Yeah, I know, right? This is like the number one. <laughs> I heard there's, just, there's a new one opening in the country. up, too. I forget what it's called. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, where did we go the other day, Charles? Uh, big Baggies? Bags? Bag, bags Bags Bees. Bags <laughs> yeah, that place. I've seen that. Where's that at? That's in uh, Oceanside. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great food, great huh. beer, great service. And uh, it's, it's yeah, uh, we did good. a couple of. Uh, tables or whatever they are of uh, tasters and all really good stuff there too so check them out right so on. have any of you ever joined the secret society i've thought about it yeah, yeah. I, I almost joined the masons at one point yeah like out of high school like i was at a street fair and i was talking to them but they're like oh yeah no 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 no, no. here's our form and then i blame to be sponsored Apparently not, not really. I guess you do and you don't. Sometimes. Like, yeah. Well, from what I'm aware is, is now their membership's so low, but it yeah. used to be that you had to have a family member, and if you've ever had a family member, they can look in the archives, and so you're a shoe in there. Otherwise, you have to have a sponsor, but it's pretty easy nowadays to, to get sponsored and get in because such a low membership. Yeah, they, just, they just want your dues. By and large. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like I was just at a street for fair, talked to a guy for like five minutes, and he's just like, "Oh, here's an application." I'm just like, "All right," filled it out, and then it got to the end, some about like a higher power, and I'm just like, "Ah," oh, and I blanched at that. Had it in my room for about a week, and then after about a week, I was just like, "Yeah, fuck it." Yeah, that was that was my interaction with him, I guess. I mean, I was part of a secret sex club. Does that count? <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Actually, we're not talking about size it had here. It had nothing be... to do with the Masons. Right. You know? All right. Well, there is some elements of the Masons that has every aspect to do with secret Sick. sex clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Bohemian Grove. Yeah. Bohemian Grove. There's you that. Got, mm -hmm. you got is that Masons though? Well, you, well, it's a branch of that's masonry. Really? It's, it's a different. Okay. It's a different 
I thought that was supposed to be the uh, Illum- Bavarian Umala- Illuminati. I thought uh, that was they're more politically, you know. The Bavarian Illuminati officially ended in what, 1798? Something like that. Supposedly, but there's letters that from exist Washington, after, right? Yeah. From Washington that talk about how Illuminati have infiltrated the Masonic Lodge in the Americas, mm-hmm. and that was written after that supposed end date of when they got kicked out of Bavaria and what have you, disbanded. But. There's another order called the... Are they connected, though? Are they two different Illuminati groups? Well, what do you mean? Oh, well, that's, you know... Yeah, I... I, I keep but Supposedly, the Masons are their own uh, entity, and mm-hmm. the Illuminati infiltrated them from the inside, like, worked up their ranks right. uh, to control the Masons. So, basically, the uh, as of today, the Masons are supposed to be the puppets of these Illuminati that have worked through the system. Right. And how does question. how do the Shriners fit into that? Well Shriners are just 70, 70 the thirty two degree Masons plus six months and then you become a Shriner. The Shriners are a different group altogether though, right? I don't know. There's different I was there's hearing different stuff today. groups, right? You've got Shriners, you've got the what was the the Kilwins or something like that? Jacobins, either? No, it's it's K I W I N S. There's a grip something. of them for sure. And then there's there's um, there's also the Scottish Rite. You know, there's different there's and different branches, but I believe York they're all Rite, Masons. York Rite, Scottish York Rite, Rite, yeah. Scottish Rite. They're all branches of of Freemasonry. They're d- they're different orders. Of Do it. they all get along though? Like, or is it like a, is there like are there different branches because of the, there's a schism, or are they different branches just because like well this is our well, flavor? Different of branches are like the Scottish. In the right, French, in the, yeah, well, the French. Yeah. They also yeah. had, um, for a time, they did uh, different charities. So they had different. They have. They had different passions. If right. you had a passion for okay. an elect, or if you had a passion to help, like the Shriners did a lot of charities, uh, to, uh, children's hospitals, and they actually had their own uh, socialized medicine thing going on, where you could, you could actually. A lot of those orders actually did, where where, eighty years ago before. There was there there was considered a, a medical crisis because it, it was medicine was too considered too low the cost of the medical care was considered too oh, low wow, okay so they considered that a crisis but they were organ there were these organizations and many many other organizations uh, would have a doctor and everyone would pay dues to have that doctor for right the year, I've right? heard of that yeah so, okay. so that was another part of what they what they did and Me- I think that's why aid, a mutual aid society right and I think that's okay. what happened like that's why afterwards when it was kind of outlawed you mm-hmm. know for the insurance companies and the American Medical Association got got, in, got involved in government you know started meddling around I think that the Shriners kind of still went into children children's hospitals and charities and okay mm-hmm. I think it's interesting is Martin Van Duren ran on a platform of anti-masonry and he's the only president not directly descended from King, George? King John what, Lackland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What year was that? Well, it, 1840s, yeah, well, I think? Yeah, that sounds that right. Yeah, yeah, mid-1840s, 1840, yeah. That was around the time when this guy ended up dead. He was a mason and he wrote a book telling the secrets of the lodge and the initiatory or the initiatory things and the different levels of, you know, going up the ranks and, and they they killed him. And it was after that uh, pretty horrific death in the community that I think it was that president who ran on that platform. And, yeah. Interestingly, uh, the Mizzies published, Mizzies Institute published uh, Reassessing the Presidency. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with the book or have read it. It's a, okay. It's a big one. Mm-hmm. And uh, through a, uh, you know, kind of a Mizzy slash ANCAP kind of uh, lens, they reassess the policies of the various presidents, and uh, they come out putting Van Buren as uh, the best president in U.S. history. <laughs> You mentioned you mentioned that book. Better than William Henry Harrison. <laughs> yeah, the one that <laughs> poor guy got got the mo- pneumonia after giving a, a, a two-hour inauguration months. speech oh, or something. That's right. Yeah, he gave the longest inauguration speech in history until Clinton, I think. 
Which apparently we all have to go or get a cold from that. Yeah. <laughs> so now you almost kind of want to read because it, like it was so long it killed somebody, right? You know, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this it might be good. important to listen to this. But I yeah. have I have a question um, from some information we were watching this morning. It's, it, in the the original founders were Freemasons. <coughs> were all of, all of them also right? Masons? You know, it says George Washington no. was a master Mason. No, well, how many of them were actually builders? Oh, no, no, right. I think a lot of them probably were just speculative masons, just like you know, well, intellectual masons. No, that's what Freemasonry is about. It's a building the temple. It bodies the temple. Okay, so, so it's got, it doesn't have anything to do with laying, like laying bricks. bricks and, well, I, mean, I heard that's how like I got actual started. Masonry right, yeah. so, work, well, yeah, they right. The so there, that's, there is part of that. That's, that's part of it too. Is they have an architectural aspect of it. You know, it, it laying the cornerstone of a building. It's important. But uh, yeah, I think it, it. My understanding is that they view the body as a temple, and the work they do is inner work, and so they're building the temple. There's a lot of other stuff that comes with it, but I think that's a common thread throughout yeah. the well, various schools of masonry. It, it is about building the temple, the inner temple. Uh, was it something that uh, a good portion of them were also builders and built buildings, and then they kind of had this belief system also? Well, before the 1700s, that was the case. And then, it, or it might have been earlier, around the four, it kind of been as early as 14, I don't think, between 15 and uh, 1700s, that's when you got the Freemasons in terms of the speculative or the intellectual Masons that were kind of D, more John D, and yeah, around that time Bacon. period. Yeah, it's when uh, Freemasonry. Uh, so from the surfaced, Renaissance. Yeah, around that period. Queen from Elizabeth. When, exactly. Uh, that's when kind of like what modern Masonry is that we have today, the local lodges that we see. Before that, it was pretty much entirely mystery schools. Mystery schools, but in, they're very much into the craft of actually laying the stone and doing the major cathedrals of They were laborers. Europe. They, they were laborers. They were yeah, they were they were craftsmen. Mm -hmm. uh, they built the cathedrals of, of uh, Europe uh, from what, like the 12th to the 14th century, and. Uh, there are other uh, branches that went into building the uh, mosques of uh, uh, the Middle East and oh, what have you, the Muslim mosques, and I think uh, some other even more remote in India, they, they even branched so far as there. But my favorite secret society associated with the Masons, or at least it was on, even publicly on their website until a scandal broke out, was the Royal Order of the Jesters. And the sole purpose of this wow, order I never even heard of that. Was, okay, keep was, going. Was, yeah. was basically to have sex contests and sexual orgies and like that's the primary that was all they were about was having like you know who who would have their little man go crying home you know, <laughs> because he couldn't hang with the that with was the, big the club boys. I was part of. Oh, so <laughs> now we know. Familiar. Okay, this all yeah. comes together. I went crying home a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. Yeah, that there's definitely that aspect to uh, at least you know part of the secret societies, but yeah. now there's at least two religions mixed in with all this. So you got the the Catholics through the Jesuits and the Jews, obviously. So how does that all play in? I've heard that the Jews play a substantial part. I mean, some Masons and you know commentaries on you know the the Lodge have said that. It's all predicated upon uh, Judy, uh, Judaism uh, to some degree, in in, in kind of re uh, you know retermin retermin uh, retermin uh, Jewish uh, beliefs, and particularly like I think uh, the Kabbalistic Jewish beliefs, which is you know a mystery tradition of Judaism uh, going back and. Uh, yeah, according to you know Masons, Freemasonry is or Masonry is the oldest uh, intact institution of a secret society, and I think there's probably a pretty good reason for that. I mean, you look at Sol Solomon's Temple it was said to be built by uh, you know yeah, that's not, part of the not Masons, you know, their the ancestors. Um, yeah, I've heard. I've even that heard the the, is that who? the myth mm, that. No, that really the Masons were formed by early. the builders of the Solomon's Temple. Solomon's Temple. Yeah. I, I think it's I think it's a point to mention that uh, anybody who's watching the show a lot, obviously, like 
you guys already know, but for those, like, if this is their first episode they've stumbled onto, we're, we're not collectivists around here. So, and how does that relate to what we're talking about? Is that, you know, we mentioned, like, you know, we're saying, like, oh, the, you know, this is related to the Jews, right? So, let's... I don't want anybody watching this to make this believe that we're like somehow like we hate Jews or something. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the there there are people who have been in high places and have done certain things that just so happen to be Jewish. It doesn't mean that like we think anybody who who uh, reads a Torah and goes to temple every week is is an evil or bad person or something. So yeah. Same thing with Masons. I mean, most Masons, I think, you know, from what I understand don't really understand what they're getting into when they get into the membership at the lodge and how it's like a secret society within a secret society and it's not until you get into the upper echelons of the uh, order that you realize that it's basically luciferianism um you know the belief that man is god or is to become god uh through uh you know ridding himself of ignorance and the attainment of perfect knowledge of divine knowledge and uh that's lucifer the bearer of light yeah lucifer the bearer of light so for them they, they pretty much worship light and uh, you know it gets kind of confusing you know what what lucifer exactly is or what the light exactly is or what have you but um i mean yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's layered. I mean, it's, we're. It's, you know, I mean, it's like an onion. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> secret society within a secret society. Hmm. Oh. You know, what I mean, that's that, that's layered. Yeah, well, no, right. sure. So I think. Uh, okay, so. And there's different levels, right? Right. There's, just, there's different levels of of it, and I think there. I personally, from my research, I think that I do believe um, that the Bavarian Illuminati had infiltrated, and I still think there they are. Ha, they are involved in that today. And uh, especially through the Skull and Bone Society, and I and I believe that the Masons uh, originally, the builders, the architects, uh, and their belief system was that one of no longer being ruled by kings, and uh, having democracy, and that was the closest thing, or, or a democratic republic, and that was the closest thing to freedom, you know, uh, that that they could they could grasp. Or actually, it was Thomas Paine, right, that mm -hmm. that, that really brought all that into into play is, is actually not having a king because they all just want the king to behave better. So I, I, I think that the intent originally um, was about freedom and a democratic republic uh, and, and people having the right to rule themselves and a, and a minimum of government. But I think in the very beginning the fix was in from when the Articles of Confederation were pushed out right. and, and the Declaration, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Constitution was was put into power, so I think. But federalists. Was, yeah, the federalists, right? So I, that's I think that also, um, it, and then it's just been it's, it's a transition, you know. There's been this battle inside of this of these orders, and yeah. mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's just like there's uh, just like with the CIA and the FBI and the NSA, there is war, a war going on in the very organizations. There's two, there's maybe two, maybe three factions inside yeah. each of these organizations. That are for you know that believe in uh, similar ideals to what we do, or believe in a, a democratic republic, and then there are the others that are just all the order of followers. So I think that I think that that just um, that's what really has kind of blossomed into what we have today. All of the, you know a lot of more. There's a lot more factors, but I think that's like the basic idea from what my research has shown. Well, you know, you have a, you know, you're talking about like the FBI and the CIA and there's like different little factions going on in there. It, it makes me really kind of, uh, you know, it, it magnifies a point that when you have an organization like a government is probably the best example that it's all hi hierarchical and then, you know, like I need to get here to do this, to do that. The people who really, really want to get there are the ones who really want to control, you know. And so that, you know, you're giving a mechanism for people who, you know, like you're saying, like bad elements of like people who might be in the Masons or something. The ones who really want to control people's lives and be domineering and, and issue edicts and, and be on their throne and pretend mm -hmm. that, 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 that they're king or something. There's the organization you go to that'll, that'll satisfy those needs of, of somebody who, it, I guess, it, is a sociopath it, or it, something like it, that. It, it, it is, it is a platform. Is it psychopath? psychopath. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. So it is yeah. a platform. 
um, for, for these people to do this. Um, so I, I agree with you there. Um, you know, so, Dude, but, conflict managers is, uh, you know, they're there to manage conflict instead of solve conflict. I mean, if you had people imbued with insider knowledge, which I don't think anyone would disagree with, uh, they could be there to help guide us toward a peaceful renaissance, but instead they're right. there simply managing conflict and not interested in eliminating conflict. Generating yeah. conflict. And generating conflict as well. Yeah, it, it's all through the occultation of information which has been going on for eons and hopefully uh, yeah, there's a revolution that of some sorts, of an information revolution there where we stop occulting information, stop hiding information, hmm. start sharing, freely sharing information. I think the internet's gone a long way. Right. To, yeah, I think that's the only reason that. we're even having this conversation, quite yeah, frankly. By large. I mean, yeah. There's a lot and of confusion. And then the printing press before that. Right. There's a lot of confusion, though. Um, you know, there's, there's, I've seen this whole thing about the Masons are satanic and evil. And, you know, I know, not satanic. I, I know a little bit, I know a little bit about um, you know their their belief system, and I think it's just another belief system. There's Muslim belief systems, there's a Christian belief system, mm -hmm. and they have their rituals. The Masons have their what is it? Baal, you know, they, 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 Baal is one of them, and it's and they have the the oil uh, and what else is it? Corn. The corn, and, and then they drink out of the, a, wine. A, the wine out of a skull. Yep. I mean, the Catholics do that, you know, the body of Christ and 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 the blood of Christ, and they believe it believe that's what it is and even uh, other uh, other sects of of christianity uh, will do it time every, every once in a while that, that are not catholics they will celebrate that body of christ and the eucharist uh, but they use bread instead and wine and they have everyone gets wine in the audience not just the i liked my grape priest. juice and crackers <laughs> <laughs> my uh my uh my grandma when i was a little kid was in the altar guild and in our particular church the blood of christ was sherry port and it was delicious because she'd be out there doing the thing. I'm like, oh, look, I'm a little kid. Mm, booze. That's so, yeah, legit. Sherry Port, apparently. Yeah. And, it, and that, I, I've, I've talked to other people, and that's really po that's really yeah. common with churches is Sherry Port for some reason because it's sweet. So, so who stuff. here? Yeah. Let's, we're Pretty kind of getting rolling through time. And I, <laughs> I, I think we should talk about um, is there a conspiracy? Is it a conspiracy? What, what are you guys, what are your thoughts on that? Who? Who's, who thinks there is? I'd, I'd like to comment it. on that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so Manly P. Hall wrote a book. Uh, Manly P. Hall was probably the most highly esteemed occultist of the 20th century. He was uh, given a awarded a honorary a 33rd degree Masonic uh, title, even though he I don't think he ever went through the, the degrees in a normal fashion, uh, and was termed by uh, Masonic magazine as Masonry's greatest philosopher. And he wrote a book called The Secret Destiny of America, and uh, in it he spells out how all the esoteric uh, traditions uh, or societies throughout history uh, have been seeking a solitary aim, ultimately, and that is the uh, bringing about uh, Plato's Republic, really. I mean, it, basically, uh, by and large, uh, accumulating the uh, wealth and power necessary to institute a global uh, empire. Uh, philosopher an kings? A, a philosopher kings, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. A, a, an enlightened empire, which Manly P. Hall, I think, kind of divertly terms as a democracy, but if you any, know anything about uh, Plato's Republic, it's anything but a democracy. It's, it's elitist it's, all the way. Yeah, it's, yeah. and so uh, we're actually <coughs> going through a book right now, a little book study group uh, on uh, The Open Society by Karl Par. Pa Karl Popper and its enemies, and in it he's uh, dispelling the spell of Plato and how, um, you know, just so much of what Plato wrote it gets kind of idealized because if he, he was a great thinker, and even though, you know, he has things I'm totally against, you have to give him credit for being an amazing thinker, but, so I think that's ultimately what the secret societies are, are, are on the uh, course for, and I think there's definitely... You know, some people will get wrapped up in like, oh, it's the Jesuits. Like, no, it's not the Jesuits. It's the Masons. No, it's not the Masons. It's, you know, the Zionists. No, it's not the Zionists. It's, it's the, uh, you know, it's, it's the all Shriners. of them high-fiving. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> all of them have a role to play. 
And there might be times where, you know, one faction of psychopathy doesn't like the way another faction of psychopathy is doing things and they'll war with each other and then there'll be some kind of, you know, what have you. But even uh, Anthony Sutton, I wanted to touch on him because yeah, he right. does really great work that you brought up to me, which is really appreciated. Um, you know, studying, like, real history of Skull and Bones and, you know, you got Prescott Bush, you got Walker Bush, you got uh, Bush Jr., they're all members. You got Kent uh, Carey was in there, and he got some documentations that basically said um, the motto of Skull and Bones is "Might is Right." And what I find fascinating about that is Manly P. Hall in another uh, work uh, says that that's the motto of the Black Magician. And uh, so, you, who's you the know, Black mag Magician? The Black Magician is somebody who uses magical forces for the purpose of less than admirable and honorable and virtuous, uh, you know, Ends. objectives, yeah. So, uh, and that's ultimately what, you know, I think, you know, at least the dark side of these secret societies are, are engaged in. But, uh, so yeah, I think there is a conspiracy. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and talk about insulting... Long story short. Yeah. <laughs> huh? uh, Long story short. Long story short. Uh, talk about insulting, it isn't, uh, from what I understand, uh, Skull and Bone Society. The the skull is Geronimo's skull. Geronimo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's that's. Is is that low. is is that's that a low blow? Is that not? Is I'm that not, not sure. true? I've heard, I've heard that. Yeah, because because if that's true, like that's really insulting. It's like, hey, we're gonna give this this person who was a you know uh, a, you know a champion of freedom to his people, mm -hmm. and his skull is now part of our hierarchical like mystic this like let, let's let's man. control people you yeah. know sort of thing like, but uh, so. I did just see something too, and I, the name escapes me. But there's this guy who used to write. He's Canadian, I think. <coughs> used to write for Forbes. Supposedly has uh, uh, been used as a, a Western uh, voice to Eastern secret societies, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the basically the Eastern secret societies are essentially saying. The Western secret societies are fucking the world up, and yeah, right. they're not going to take it anymore. Okay. And that they're, uh, it, what this guy was saying is that essentially all of it's going to come to an end because there's going to be a bunch of mass arrests and public disclosure and all this other stuff. Mm. And it just escapes me because huh. this guy is a fairly uh, well known Western journalist, but he's been based, he's got a degree in Asian studies with China, China specific theater specific uh, um, specialty and but he's based in Japan speaks Japanese writes books in Japanese so he's mm -hmm. he's, he's deeply rooted in Asia and um, that's quite an accomplishment he says that's why he yeah. says that's why he's he's been privy to the information he's been privy to and mm -hmm. so I don't know how much how credible it is it there you can go to YouTube there's a lot of them I just wish wished I could remember his name oh, but he has an interesting oh. slant because we're you having this conversation where it's western culture centric and mm. didn't know well gee guess what there is at least some utterings out there of you know uh, Asian secret societies well, part well. of the tri trilateral commission was yeah to bring them into the fold and put yeah. them under the western banking system and and yeah all that jazz and uh, according to this guy that they're not having any more of it. They were just over it. Well, we're not going to put up with hmm. that nonsense anymore. I, uh, okay, so I, I, the way I envisioned this to go in my head, which doesn't necessarily mean that it was the right way to do it, because actually the way this is going on is a, is a really wonderful conversation. But I was sitting here thinking, like, oh, you know, what we'll probably do is we'll all look into a secret society and talk about it. And so I go, okay, what I don't know a lot about? Jesuits. So I look up Jesuits. You know what? Couldn't find a damn thing about them. <laughs> Which I don't. I don't know if that's uh, if if that's like a good thing or a bad thing. Could I not find anything about them because like they were that good at like you know erasing the internet? Which I you know I'm not sure if it's is possible. But uh, it that? was kind of disappointing because I was looking for like oh I'm going to find a good. Well, they were not necessarily like, erase it so long as they have people in Google so to hide it. You need yeah. like you need like the Jews. 
<laughs> There's a good Jew. I think it's Eric Phelps, right? And he's really good at airing Jesuit laundry. Okay, okay. It's so there Vatic is somebody Vatican that... Vatican okay. assassin, a specialist. Th right? that, that, so that, there's there's somebody that I could look for that actually, like, can source something. Because right. all I could find was, like... Uh, a Wikipedia article and then another website that more or less just copy and pasted the Wikipedia article and said the Jesuits are evil and you're like yeah but this is what you got from Wikipedia I don't get it and yeah. everything else was like a blog uh, blogspot you know slash blogspot.com website which are usually I hate to say it terrible at sourcing anything mm -hmm. but uh, but what I, I you know, the other thing I was wondering about is like so you know, you mentioned secret sex parties, right? Mm -hmm. So if if in the in the future, you know, we've got, you know, we find out secret society, they've got some sort of sex party going on, is there a point where, like, they're going to start admitting, like, sentient robots into their secret sex party? Is this, like, something that's, like, would go that on? Or they already have. Hold on, hold on. Okay. We're, we're out of time. Uh, Damn it! <sighs> yep. That would have been a good one for the yeah. oh, robot sex. <laughs> that would have right, been a good one. Right. Uh, I, I was really interested to hear what you had to say about that. <laughs> yeah, right. but, um, we could do another episode on this. Uh, yeah, there's we, we've done more uh, than yeah. part, part twos on a, on a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, I should hit it again. Didn't get to everything. But not tonight. Have a good one. Peace.